Oh, I love that music on a Thursday night. It's so much fun. Hey, Mindy, how are you? Hey, good, how are you? Good, good. Hey, everybody, welcome to Cruise Chat Live with Where's Walter Travel. I am Walter, your independent travel advisor with Where's Walter Travel. Uh, we bring you cruise travel, cruise land, luxury, and expedition. Uh, so if we can ever be of service, just reach out to Where'sWalterTravel.com. And tonight, we have a really fun guest. So snorkeling is a big part of cruising. And certainly when you go to a beach destination, I'm sure a lot of people try snorkeling for their very first time when they're on a cruise. And then when you get a little bit more advanced, you go ahead for scuba. And I have, I want to get this right, I have master diver Mindy Hughes here with us tonight from Mindy's Life and Adventures. Yep, you got it right. Good job. <laughs> I got it right. So, so the first question, of course, has to be, because you corrected me, what is the difference between your certification as a master diver and a dive master? Okay, so as a master diver, I am, I've gone through all the stages up to master diver. I am not allowed to take other people under the water on tours, where once you oh. make up to dive master, you can start being paid for your services and you're allowed to lead oh. tours. Yeah. Okay, very cool. Very, very cool. So folks, uh, if you all have questions about going under the sea in pretty much any way, shape or form, Mindy probably has some advice. We're going to talk through uh, equipment, we're going to talk through destinations, training, what you should look for, very importantly, what you should look for in a tour, tour operator, maybe some red flags, uh, both through the cruise line and independent tours. Um, Mindy, uh, and I went out on a Thanksgiving cruise, and actually we've got some stories to talk about from that particular cruise. Hey, Tara. Hey, Betty. Thanks so much for joining in. Welcome, everybody. And of course, if you have questions about cruising, certainly drop them in. We're going to focus in on snorkeling and scuba tonight. But if you've got questions about cruising, certainly throw them in as well. Mindy is getting to be quite the cruiser now. I'm working on that. I've been booking yeah. them on a lot of cruises. So, so Mindy, why don't you just just uh, briefly tell everybody so that uh, everybody, I already said you're a master diver, but why don't you uh, just let everybody know like some of your qualifications, what you've been doing in terms of diving and maybe snorkeling. Okay, so I originally got my open water certification all the way back in 2013, um, but I didn't do a whole way lot of it then. Yeah, way back. Uh, but it's, it, it's been in the last two years that I've taken diving more seriously, and I went through and got my advanced, and I went on and nice. did my rescue, and now I'm a master diver. So nice. uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I would like to maybe eventually get to dive master, but we'll see. Nice. Nice. So obviously, folks, if you've got questions about getting into diving or even with snorkeling, too, we're going to talk about snorkeling as well. We're going to start with scuba and then we'll we'll uh, we'll come up with uh, uh, snorkeling on the other side. Hey, Bill and Cynthia, you're here as well. Hey, guys, thanks so much for joining in. And by the way, Mindy is in our Facebook group, our private Facebook group. Where's Walter Travel? Uh, if you go on in there, you just got to answer two questions and you can come on and join us and then you can talk to Mindy. Mindy's also in our Sun Princess group. So if you want to meet Mindy, she'll be on the Sun Princess with us in October. Oh, so excited. Just saw some new pictures of the dome today. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. Can we just get <laughs> to October too. tomorrow, please? I just want to go. I know, um, right? <laughs> so let, let's just start talking about uh, some scuba. So um, it let, you know, myself, I've never done scuba diving. I know not much about it. Um, but it, if I want to start thinking seriously about it, and I want to learn at home, who or what should I start looking for? I would start with finding a dive center near you, uh, especially mm -hmm. if you're looking at maybe doing some diving near your home. So you can dive in everything. If there's water, you can dive in it. Lakes, rivers, yeah. doesn't just have to be the ocean. Um, in fact, oh. there's a lot of people that do just lake or river diving. So it's it's very interesting. Common. Mm -hmm. Never even thought about river diving. I just think of river rescue, but I don't think of river diving. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I've actually got a friend who does a lot of black river diving, and that's where you can probably see like this much. <laughs> wow. It's like pitch wow. black diving. He finds a lot of shark's wow. teeth that way. So, yeah. Oh, wow. yeah, all different types of diving. So I would start near your house and see what you have available to you. If you are on a very dry part of land and you plan on taking <laughs> like a cruise, some cruises offer paddy courses. And so you can learn oh. how to dive while you're on a cruise ship and then dive once you get to a destination. That's a really cool offering that they have. 
Not all cruise ships do. Um, I know some of the bigger rural Caribbean ships do it. They have the, the patty on there. Yeah. Wow. So you've already said patty twice. What What is patty? So patty is one of several uh, dive centers that can help you get started in your diving adventures. Uh, I personally started with Patty when I first got my original open water, and then I moved over to Naui. So I'm actually a Naui certified diver now. So what is that? <laughs> I'm it's, sorry. So what, it's what like that? Walmart, Target. <laughs> it's just a different name of a different center that allows you to gotcha. get more. <laughs> Gotcha. It's totally, it's so, totally different. <laughs> so going back to like learning at home, are there certain things I should be looking for with a dive? Because obviously not all dive centers are made equal. So are there certain things right. I should be looking for? Maybe questions I should be asking when I go to these local dive centers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I would highly recommend going there in person and meeting the team and talking to some of their customers if there are customers of theirs around. Um, if it's not quite that accessible, uh, make sure you do heavy due diligence for research online and read the reviews, be thorough. You can never be th too thorough. You know, when you call up the dive center, ask them all kinds of questions, you know, like how long have you been in business? How many dives have you done? You know, what kind of certifications do you offer? Um, some right. dive sites will only give open water and advanced open water dive mm -hmm. courses. So if you're interested in further expanding your dive capabilities, they may limit you. So really do some research okay. and ask the questions. Yeah. Gotcha. And Bill is asking that is spelled P-A-D-I, correct? Yes. Yes. Patty. Yes. Patty. So what does that stand for? Trick question. No idea. <laughs> 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 no idea. Just like I think, the guru. I think Naui Got it. is National Association Underwater Instructors is Naui. Awesome. So Patty's okay. probably something something similar. But yeah, so Patty, they do. Okay. Um, I guess he's looking because he wanted to see what maybe cruise ships offered it. But there are sure. some Royal Caribbean. I haven't seen any of those on any of the other lines. Yeah, I think Royal Caribbean is really because I remember being on Symphony of the Seas and just seeing a whole bunch of people with tanks all lined up getting ready to go off the ship. And I thought that was so interesting. So my yeah. off the camera person just looked it up for me. It is Professional Association of Diving Instructors, Patty. <laughs> Thank you, off camera professional. <laughs> you have your own Rebecca. I do. Rebecca it's too. Zach. <laughs> it's Zach. That's awesome. Thank you for the question, uh, Bill. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Um, okay, so what are so like what are some of, without going like into like all kinds of details, but what what are some of the varying levels of scuba training? Sort I know you said you're a certified master diver. Mm -hmm. So like obviously like in karate we have different color belts and stuff. So what what are like some of the varying levels of scuba training? So the very basic uh, entry level training is open water and that'll get you into 30 feet deep. Um, if you want to advance, you go up to advanced open water and that gets you into 90 and then uh, you can get into uh, rescue, but that rescue is right. kind of a required prerequisite to get into master. Uh, once you get into master, then you can get up to 130 feet and that's as deep as i've been is 130 feet and then once you do uh -huh. that you can get into specialty diving and so you can branch off you don't have to just go um the professional route which would be the next okay. step for me would be dive master and then instructor you can branch off at any stage once you're at least open water advanced into wow. uh the nitrox and into trimix and I know I'm saying things that are like, woo, woo, woo. So those are different okay. types of gases you can breathe underwater to allow you to dive deeper depths for a longer period of time. So that's just the mini version. So, that, so that, that's what those different mixes are. They allow the body to go down further down into the water? Yep, for longer, yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. So what so what is uh, what is it like at 130 feet? I mean, do you, do you start to feel the pressure at that point, you know, pushing in on you? No, I, I've never really noticed it once I'm there. Like you start to feel it as you start to descend. Obviously you have to clear your ears. You can feel that pressure in your ears. 
Um, but then once you've started pressurizing down, like the further down you go, I don't notice it. Maybe I'm not as sensitive at 130 mm -hmm. feet though, when I was like there and I'm like looking at my gauge and I'm like, wow, I'm here, I'm at 130 feet. And I look up and I'm like, that's a lot of water between me and the surface. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And does that, does that take control to go from 130 back up to that? Oh, you yes. don't like you hurt yourself? Yeah, you cannot do it fast. It is a very slow process coming back up because you yeah. need to allow your body to release the uh, nitrogen that it's built up coming down from breathing in the gases. Yeah. Okay. So you have to do it slowly. Okay. You don't, don't do it fast. You don't want the bend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I like, I didn't know if like at a hundred feet, but that's so, wow. That's amazing. Yep. I can't so there are safety stops as you, as you come up. Yes. Okay. Okay. Bill said he did the sea trek in San Juan and it was fantastic. He said he, he fixed it on second one, but it was fantastic. Bill, I'm not familiar with the sea trek. Is that the thing Me where either. you dive underwater with the bell? Oh, I, think I did it might the be. um Yeah, I did the boss submersible in St. Thomas, and that was the thing with the bell on the electric scooter, so you just had to dive under and pop up on the bell. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And I'd be able to sit on the scooter and go and stuff like that. So that that was kind of fun. Um, yeah, and I then think they have the one where, is that where dome you walk. Head. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. you can also walk too, or you can do what, what Mindy does and put on a full on suit and go, go for yeah, it. Yeah, just and go. I, just, <laughs> I think it's just so amazing, Mindy, that, that you actually do this. Um, okay. Yeah. So he said there was a, uh, a helmet connecting to a floating air tank. That is very cool. Those dive bells are amazing because at least it gives us the opportunity to go underwater, you know, without having to learn all of that. If we just want to go see it and experience it real quick. Cool. Yeah, it is. It is a great experience for those that are just kind of wanting to see and maybe not trying to get into all the certifications. It's also more friendly for people that have problems with their ears for clearing because you don't have to worry about so right. much of that because it's all encapsulated. Wow. At about at about what point, like how far down do you really do you really have to start worrying about your ears? Oh, you start worrying about your ears before you hit the water. <laughs> No, but like, I mean, so, like, like try, try, trying to clear them, like how far yeah, down no, does it start, I start to get difficult? I start, I start um, flexing that, like, you know, doing the, the nose and, and jaw movements, all those things early. Like as soon as I'm on the oh, dive wow. boat, I start flexing that. So it's, it's ready wow. to start moving and opening. And then that way, when I hit the water, it clears quicklier, more, more quickly. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, wow. and then at five feet, you're going to start pushing now before you start feeling that pressure because once you feel the pressure, it's too late. You should have already started clearing. Oh, that's a really good tip. Oh, that's cool. That is so cool. Uh, Nurse Tara wants to do that with the helmet when you go to Bermuda. I, I wouldn't, you know, if, if any of y'all just want to kind of see what it's like underwater, maybe you don't want to snorkel, uh, you're not ready for scuba, that, I mean, it is kind of a cool way. It's not, you're not that far underwater, but it's kind of a cool way to get underwater. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Betty Sim did lessons in Dallas. Then instructor did open water test in Cozumel. Oh my goodness. Love the wall and drift diving. Oh, can you expand on drift diving? Have you done drift diving? Yes, I have. Drift diving is a lot of fun. So that's when you are dropped down into a current. And so you just flow oh. with the current. It is, it is kind of cool because you don't have to do a lot of work and the boat will come and follow you. They know where the drift is going to take you, the current's going to take you, and then they meet you at the other oh, end wow. and you just, just float, just go. It's amazing. It, it's kind of like uh, tubing on the river, yeah. right? The bus yeah, will come pick like you up at the end. Yeah, it's like tubing underwater, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is really cool. Thanks for that, Betty. Uh, that, thanks for that. That was really, really cool. Um, so if I were to start today, mm -hmm. you know, let's just say I go find a dive school and all that, and there probably is no typical time, but in your opinion, what would be the typical time before I might be proficient enough that I could feel comfortable diving? I mean, it varies from diver to diver, from person to person. Right. Um, it's, it's, you know, it, it's learning any skill for the first time. Um, some people, they, they just are like fish in water naturally and they pick it up right away. And then some people struggle with it. So it's, it's kind of hard to put a, a real time stamp on it, but let's just say you're average. Let's say average. Average mm -hmm. people, probably by the time you're in your 20th, 25th dive, you should have, especially if you're diving regularly, you should mm -hmm. feel more confident and comfortable with your buoyancy and clearing and, and the basic mechanics of diving. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's a lot of dives. 
Wow. <laughs> it's really, well, That's it's not when you're, when you're doing it a lot. Because, like, um, I went on this one dive trip, and we were doing five dives a day. So it's pretty quick. Oh, it can be. Okay. Wow. Yeah. wow. Wow. And, uh, hi, Kaylin. I see you've joined us, too. Thanks so much for joining in on the show. I'm, I'm, I'm really learning a lot. I'm so glad you, you joined us tonight. Uh, I'm so glad you're having me on. <laughs> so cool. And by the way, uh, you know, uh, tell everybody, what is your channel and what do you feature on your channel? Okay, my channel is Mindy's Life and Adventures, and I feature a little bit of everything from scuba diving, snorkeling, I go on cruises, I go to the theme parks, I do um, food reviews of restaurants here in Orlando that I think would be interesting to tourists or other locals. And um, yeah, I always like, come on along on an adventure with me. <laughs> <laughs> so be sure to subscribe as Mindy's Life and Adventures uh, right here on YouTube, and you're on TikTok and a few others, right? Yep, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, all the all the things. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So, so support all the content creators out there. Make sure you uh, subscribe to Mindy as well. Cynthia saying she did the submarine in Cozumel, not mm -hmm. swimming, but still cool, going so deep under the water. Marine life certainly an appreciation of what you do. Yeah, that's another way to do it. There's little submarines yeah, that go under. That's the dry way to go. <laughs> <laughs> the easy way to go. <laughs> yeah, it's the easy way to go. Right, right. Oh, that's so awesome. Nurse Tara, do we need the fins to snorkel or are they just to help you move through the water easier? Great question. You don't have to have them. Um, my husband typically does not use them. I do typically like to have fins because I want to cover more ground more quickly and not get as tired. So these are my travel snorkel fins. They are a much shorter fin than my standard fin. And here I'll show you what my standard fin looks like in comparison. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this wow. one's much more travel friendly in my bag um, where this one is is not so much. So, But that's the difference in my travel snorkel fin versus my big scuba fin. And I do recommend them because, again, it helps you move through the water more easily and without tiring yourself out. But my husband doesn't like them, so he doesn't use them when he snorkels. <laughs> so totally <laughs> preference. <laughs> that that that's a really good size. Uh, that, that 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 travel one. You sure? Mm -hmm. That's a that looks like that would fit into carry-on luggage. It no does. problem, right? Yeah. Right. So Betty's asking if you've been to the Santa Rosa Wall in Cozumel. I have not. I have do I have got done a dive in Cozumel, but not there. Okay. So we'll talk about that soon. Uh, I'm sure that's going to be one of the things we're going to talk about. Um, the next thing I want to talk about too, because you know, scuba diving does. Uh, involve a lot of gear you know snorkeling is a lot less gear we'll talk about that in just a few minutes but um, scuba comes with a lot of parts and pieces and gear and all of that so I want to talk about like renting versus bringing mm -hmm. your own stuff and let, let's start a start with a very basic topic that a lot of people may not know but what what can you and can you not bring on an airplane when you travel Okay, so do not bring your tanks. <laughs> they are not going <laughs> to let them on the plane. So leave your okay. tanks at home. Um, don't bring those. And then um, dive knives you can bring, but only in the um, the stored sure. luggage, not the carry-on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but those That's are really the only two restrictions. Everything else is typically yeah. fine. Um, sometimes I have been stopped for uh, my regulator set because of the way that it's set up. It can look like a gun, and so they'll uh, want to see it. <laughs> and I'm like, it's just a regulator gotcha. here. It's fine. Gotcha. <laughs> so, so you leave your tank at home, but, but you actually bring your regulator so that you're yes. using your own regulator? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, are there any special precautions that one needs to know about or any special kinds of luggage or cases to transport certain pieces of equipment? That varies from person to person. I don't use anything like super specialized. I do have some dive buddies that use only hard cases and, and the most like foam lined, like they really protect their gear, but they're probably spending more money on their gear than I spent on mine, <laughs> you know, and maybe if I spent that kind of money, I would too, but I just use the soft bags and I just pad it real well with my, um, my BCD, which is the vest that helps me be buoyant. Uh, I pack my fins in and I pack in some clothes to help kind of cushion it. Uh, gotcha. so that's what I do to kind of protect my stuff. And that's just okay. kind of how I travel with it because I don't, 
I, I just can't justify yet at this point in the game the the hard luggage and all the foaming and stuff. So, so a case that I will recommend if anybody's watching this and you've got gear, whether it's scuba gear or anything else you want to protect, even electronic, there's a company called Pelican. Uh, you will find Pelican cases on B and H Photo. I think you'll find them on Amazon as well. What's kind of cool about them is they have a pressure release. So, mm -hmm. like after it comes off the plane, you know, sometimes the, those cases get pressurized. From the plane you can actually push the button and unpressurize it make it easy to open uh and they come with all kinds of great foam and this that and the other i have used pelican cases for many many years shipped very very expensive equipment all over the place and it always came back fine so just like the bird pelican so if you're looking for a case um hey bill thank you bill said uh so if, if you want to come over and join our private facebook group like i said where's walter travel Bill just posted a slideshow of his excursion in the group. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. That's what I love. We, we're like over 550 people now. It's oh, easy no. to me uh, in the Facebook group. So if you want to come over and hang out with cool people like Bill and Nurse Tara and Betty. Cynthia, I don't know if you're in there yet, but come on over and join us for sure. Mindy's in there uh, for sure. So come on over. Uh, you're welcome, Betty. Yeah, Pelican cases. They are amazing. They, they come from very, very small all the way up to very, very large. So you can certainly find something to fit your needs. Um, so let's talk about renting versus bringing your own gear, specifically on a cruise. Because, you know, a cruise is a little bit different. You've got a small cabin. You're going around a lot. You're not going specifically to a destination. Do you have any consideration, pros and cons? Like, what do you like to bring? And what do you say, oh, I'm just going to leave that home when I'm on a cruise? I like to bring my own gear, one, because I paid for it uh, and I know it and I trust my gear and I trust the service on my gear. <laughs> it is life, life giving equipment. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful with the gear that you use because it is your life support when you are underwater. So I take that very seriously. I Great do point. typically bring my own gear unless I am going somewhere that is reputable and that I trust. Um, but I almost always bring my gear, especially on a cruise. I, I find that it's pretty easy because I got the one bag and I'm good. So, and I always can just slide it up under the bed too. So it's not like in the way during the cruise. Okay. And at a minimum, Perfect. I would always bring, if everything else is like kind of provided for me, I will always bring my own mask and snorkel. And I always bring my own regulator. Because that's going in my yeah. mouth. I, I don't want to share. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Got it. Got it. And, and hey, Rick, how are you? Good to see you, my friend. Um, so pretty much, you know, you're, so, so the biggest con then to renting is you really don't know. You right. don't know what you don't know about the gear, right? And, and a lot of times, even if you read reviews, like some of them, they may be accurate. Some of them may be not because they, you know, gear gets changed out every so every so often. Right. So you don't know exactly what you're going to get into. And then until you're there and then you're at the dive site or you're on the boat and then they're handing you the gear and you're like, uh, and let me just say, if you're ever, uh, don't go. Just be like, nope, nope, I'm, I'm not going to dive. Just don't do it. Really? If it's questionable, just don't do it. That's a great piece of advice because, like you said, it's, it's your life at that point. Yeah, it's your life giving equipment. So, if it looks questionable, don't yeah. mess around with your life. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, really, the only thing that you that you get is the tanks and that's it. Yeah. Typically, when I go, I bring my own gear and then I rent tanks. Yes. Because tanks are, okay. are pretty standard. Um, you know, it's they're they're inspected annually and they have to have the stamp marks on them so you can kind of see their service record. Okay. Okay. Great. Great. And then I was also going to ask you about, you know, pros and cons of going to a destination, but it just sounds like it's the same thing. You, if you have your own gear, you should always bring it because you know and trust it, right? I mean, if you can, if you can, that's my recommendation. Now I do get that sometimes if you're flying, that paying to fly your gear is yikes. Um, so, you know, if you're going somewhere and you can find a good reputable place to rent gear from, then it, then it can be fine. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you just, you got to do your research. You really do. And you, you have really to do, be prepared so, yeah. to, to not go dive if what you see when you get there is not acceptable. So. Okay. Now that, and that's a really good point because, you know, no, no matter how badly you want to dive, you've got to be able to trust the equipment. Yeah. 
Yeah, and you yeah. and you have to be able to be okay with being disappointed and being like, nope, I'm not doing it. Anytime you go on on a dive, if you're on a dive boat and just something doesn't feel right, you don't feel right, you feel uneasy, it is better just to mm -hmm. not dive. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you who are just joining us, uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm Walter with Where's Walter Travel. We're your independent travel advisor. We do cruises, luxury, land, and expedition. Where'sWalterTravel.com. There are links down in the description. Our services are 100% free to you. We'd like to say that uh, your memories are priceless. And we are so happy to be joined by Mindy from Mindy's Life and Adventures, also right here on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to Mindy. And tonight we're talking about scuba. Mindy is a master diver. Uh, we're talking about scuba and snorkel and anything under the sea. So if you have questions about snorkeling or scuba or anything under the water, Mindy probably has a good answer for it, or she'll make up something on the spot, one or the other. <laughs> or I'll have my off-camera person look it up. <laughs> there you go. Your, your Rebecca will look it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Cynthia also likes pelican cases, and Betty agrees, do not go on the dive if you do not feel comfortable with it. Absolutely. Your life is not worth it. Nope. Absolutely not worth it. So, which leads us to, you've kind of led us right into our next topic here, which is, so scuba tour operators. Um, what to look for when I'm looking at, you know, I'm going to see scuba tours potentially on a cruise line website. I'm going to see independent uh, scuba tours. I'm going to see scuba, like, like, you know, dive centers and whatnot. So what are some good things to be looking for? And what might be a big, you know, some red flags for you? Um, well, I have one experience in particular, and I did end up going on the dives with them. Mm -hmm. um, but I had my own gear. I would have not used their gear. That would have been a, a hard no. <laughs> um, okay. But the, the dive center looked like a shack. Um, and that's, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's typically not, wow. not good. <laughs> the no. boat, I wasn't sure whether or not it was going to run. <laughs> It was pretty bad, oh, and wow. the um, the wow. dive the dive master that was there that was going to be leading us out on the tour. He was very young, um, and not that mm. dive masters can't be young and be good and professional, but right. how much experience do you really have? Gotcha. So gotcha. Uh, I ended up, I did end up going with him, and it was not a great dive. Um, I ended okay. up having to help babysit the other divers because he was also teaching a class or, or something and he had a problem diver child and and I say gotcha. child, but they weren't really a child, but, but right. was just, they right. were having they were having problems and he was kind of having okay. to, and it was like a whole All thing. Right. So yeah. Okay. But when, but you know, if, if people are out there looking for, you know, because obviously all the all the excursions look amazing, right? Oh, yeah. All the reviews look amazing. But when I'm looking at some of these, you know, are there are there like certain things that stand out that yeah, this is this is a place that I want to dive with, or here's a red flag, I'm going to skip this one and go on to another one. So when you're cruising, for instance, uh, and you're looking at what the cruise line is offering and you're looking at what mm -hmm. a third party excursion site is offering. My trouble is, is that they a don't give you the name of the dive shop, so you can't Google it and they don't give a lot of details. So it's really mm -hmm. a hit or miss. Um, gotcha. Just be prepared to say no. Be prepared to ask for your money back if that's what it comes down to. Um, you know, you just kind of, it, it's a rice, dice roll, like, because they don't give mm. you enough information. Um, so if yeah. you can and you cruise often and you say, like, maybe you go to Cozumel regularly, uh, walk Cozumel Port and go to the dive centers there. Talk to the dive masters at the at the location. And I've done that. I found one of my favorite uh, dive partners in Grand Canyon because I went and I was like, oh, I love this this guy. He's great. And then I ended up coming back and I dove with them and they were amazing. So you know you can have those types of experiences still cruising. Um, you know, if you do, if you don't mind, you know, doing a little homework first, uh, that's a way to do it on site. If you don't want to make the, the long okay. distance phone calls or whatever. Gotcha. That is, that's really good. Hey, Greg. Hey, Jen, I see you guys in here. 
Uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, Mindy, I actually saw you doing that. Uh, we were on that Thanksgiving cruise and we walked, I think, to like three or four dive centers. Yep. And you were just having conversations. And I remember there were like two of them. You're like, yeah, I'm not going to dive with them. Nope. <laughs> and then there was like one. You're like, yeah, I'm going to yep. dive with this guy when I come back. Yep. I have his card. It's sitting on my dresser. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that was so, really cool so obviously if you can do that would there be like i, I like like you said it since they don't really tell you who they are and i will i will mention um on this topic cruise critic of which uh, we're in i know jen is in it as well there is a um call form in there and you might be able to either if you don't see the question asked you can ask the question hey has anybody done diving at Cozumel with Royal Caribbean, do you know who the dive center was? So that that could potentially be a little bit of help to everybody. That's cruisecritic.com. Yeah, that, that could that could be helpful if as long as they don't change the dive center on you. <laughs> Which they can. Yep, Which they can. Because there are uh, tons of dive centers on these islands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jan is saying she's had a lot of success planning dives via email as well. I mean if you can get the right information, you know, from them, you know, like uh, um, Mindy was saying earlier, this is your life that you are putting into the hands of some of these people. And so you want to really do some due diligence. I, I would guess, Mindy, that word of mouth would also be big too, right? Talking yes. to fellow divers. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I have done that. So, I have seen other fellow divers. I, I look for the uh, the dive t-shirts and the, the dive tattoos. And if I see one, I'm mm -hmm. like, ooh. Where have you been? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I mentioned Cruise Critic. Is there is there like some websites where people could go to like ask ask for information or find information about you know good reputable dive centers? There are um, definitely Facebook groups um, that are looking for dive buddies, talking about diving. Um, I'm on a couple. I can't think of the names of them right now, but yeah, there are okay. definitely you know just search on you know facebook or whatever social media mm -hmm. platform you like and i'm sure you're gonna find people talking about diving gotcha and i'm gonna throw this out to everybody out there who's watching too but first i'm gonna ask you so when you're on a cruise because you got limited time in a port you're going to different ports what do you think are some good ports of call for scooping and if anybody watching has some ideas too please throw those in the comments my favorite so far off a cruise ship has been grand cayman I really, really enjoy diving in Grand Cayman. Um, but there are great dive sites to be seen in Cozumel, Costa Maya. All of the islands have wonderful dive sites at them. Um, most of them you can't just shore dive to. You'll need to take a boat. Um, but there's there's plenty of dive sites in the Bahamas, and they are, they're plentiful. There's planes and shipwrecks and coral reefs and all the things like so if there's something in particular you're wanting to see if you just search around one of those islands they're they're gonna have it awesome and becky saying cozumel she loved cozumel that is so awesome and of course betty was talking about drift diving too earlier that is so cool um now what about if you're actually like flying somewhere like you're actually going to fly somewhere we're going to spend a week or some days what would maybe maybe you've been there maybe you haven't but what would be some uh, good places to go that's not on a cruise um well i just last year i did my first uh dive cruise thing uh so it wasn't on a cruise ship it was on a sailboat and it was uh oh. blackbeards and it was oh. really cool so we i flew over to nassau i had all my gear i flew over to nassau got on the sailboat and stayed on the sailboat for a full week and we did about four to five dive sites a day and it oh, was wow. fabulous so we went all up and down the exuma islands and we got to see i got to see my first plane wreck uh, we did a shark feed uh, we did the swim throughs with the caves we did some cave diving i it was it was amazing totally worth it wow that sounds amazing and, and was. Who, that was blackbeard it was called was blackbeard? blackbeard yeah yeah, if oh you just if you goodness. just search uh, Blackbeard and Nassau, you're you're gonna see it. it was so there a lot you go, everybody who goes diving, 
you know, I'll, I'll see if I represent them. I'll book you. I don't care. I'll just book you down there. That, that sounds amazing. <laughs> Four or five a day, you said? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's and so it, they have a really cool system so that as soon mm -hmm. as you get out of the water, you set your tanks in with your gear hooked up to it and they pull off your regulator and then they, type, they, they tighten in the air and then they're filling the tanks on the trip to the next dive site and so you never have to take off your gear and put it on a new tank they just refill the tank you're already hooked up to it's amazing <laughs> oh that had to be so so convenient that's it amazing really is. this is amazing i was wow. spoiled after that week i'm like gosh i don't i don't know if i can go back to normal diving again <laughs> <laughs> This is cool. Greg said him and his daughter did a beginner dive excursion in St. Thomas. Oh, I'm so jealous. Awesome. I want to dive in St. Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely awesome. Thanks for sharing, Greg. I love it. And Jen wants to dive Tahiti sailing Windstar. Ooh. Oh, that would be lovely. I yeah, can tell. I, I think Mindy would come join you on that I one would. too, right, Mindy? You need a dive buddy. <laughs> I'm available. <laughs> Mindy has no problem with that. Um, and then Becky is saying that she did a cave dive in Cancun. Ooh, Ooh, very cool. Have you ever done cave diving? I have done a little bit of cave diving. We did, we did it while we were in the Exumas. That was pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Wow, wow. I always love like those National Geographic specials when you see like those cave, like they're just like in the middle of nowhere, suddenly there's a cave like down deep. And it's like, oh my God, we're going to go diving in here. And I'm like, what are you nuts? Because, you know, you just keep picturing all the things that are going to come out of it. But <laughs> Or the places you get into that get too small and you're like, wait. I know. <laughs> I know. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wow. Wow. Um, so what is, so I think you already answered it, but um, on a cruise ship, what has been your absolute favorite dive so far on a cruise ship? Ooh, that would be the Grand Cayman. Yeah, the Grand Cayman. Then okay. when I did that in Grand Cayman. And that, some of that was because of some of their natural swim through areas that they had in the coral reef there oh. was really good. I am a junkie for the swim throughs. They're like little little caves inside the coral reef and you can swim through them. It's amazing. It's amazing. Uh, that had to be incredible. It is. It really is. It, it makes you feel like you're in the bottom of like a fish aquarium because the sand at the bottom <laughs> is just so pristine. And then you've got all this coral reef around you. It's just like, oh, so cool. Wow. So cool. Oh, that is so incredibly cool. Um, so, so you're like, you're like the little diver dude in the tank is what you're yes. saying. In the tank. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the water there was That's so awesome. clear. It was amazing. So obviously we already know that your favorite dive was the Blackbeard experience hands down. But uh, other than that, is there any other dive that really stands out for you besides that whole experience? <sighs> um, my first cave dive, uh, we did it and that was inland here in Florida. That was uh, the Blue Grotto. And that was, that was something. That made me know like where my limits are with cave diving. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Really? Why it is gets, that? It gets real dark and it gets real narrow and you're like, I can't see the exit. <laughs> so you just have to trust that you can get on, out on the other side? Yeah. Well, no, you don't. You go down. It kind of funnels mm. down. and But the further you go down, it kind of like layers down, like stair steps oh. down. And you can't see the exit anymore. And it gets dark. And even with your flashlight, and then it gets wow. close. And, and, and then if somebody hits the silt at the bottom, it turns the water all murky. Oh. And then you can't see. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, that... okay, this is, this is my limit right here. That sounds fun. <laughs> it was fun and scary and i learned my limits <laughs> there you go there you go jen is asking if you dive if, did you dive in cold water yeah so the blue grotto is um 71 degrees year round and that's really cold water i had a three millimeter wetsuit on and was freezing <laughs> I was so, I was shivering. I was so cold. I probably should have ended the dive earlier, but I I did hold out for a twenty oh. minute dive, and I but I was so cold. Uh, wow. 
Wow. I bet you were pretty doggone cold by the time you came out of there. So I was, uh, and again, was frigid. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a I needed a thicker uh wetsuit and I didn't have one. I don't I, I probably needed a five mil and I had a three and it just I don't like to dive in cold water. That's not my favorite. And a dry suit would even be better, but I have not been uh certified in diving in a dry suit, so Gotcha. Gotcha. So Okay, I'll just ask you real quickly, what's the difference between a dry suit and what you typically dive in? Okay, so a wetsuit is what it sounds like. It gets wet, and so it holds the water, it holds a thin layer of water next to your body, and then your body warms that, and it helps keep you warm. Oh. Um, a dry suit keeps all of the water out, and so you're able to stay dry because your body heat warms that pocket of air that's in oh. between you and the suit, and so that keeps you completely dry where the other allows you to get wet. And so you actually have to be certified in that type of a you suit? You need training. You, you do need training because oh. it's completely different. It changes your buoyancy dramatically because you're holding oh, that wow. air in versus just the water. Yeah. Oh, so it's, it's that very, is really very interesting. Yeah. Interesting. A great question from a, a SAC Travel Adventure. Do you bring a certain camera with you? And maybe like what types of cameras would you recommend? I bring a GoPro. I have a GoPro 11 and that's what I bring with me. I have an extra case on it and I can bring it all the way down to the 130 feet mark with me. Uh, it does really? a really GoPro good job. GoPro goes that far. Yep. Yep. I can take it down to 130 feet. Um, so it's, it's been a really good solid camera for, for that. Uh, I would like a better mm -hmm. light system for it, but uh, I know lots of divers use all kinds of different cameras. Um, I don't know if I would recommend any of them because I haven't used any of them, but I mean, do your research gotcha. and then just decide what you're willing to spend money on. Wow. Wow. I didn't realize a GoPro could go down to 130 feet. That's pretty good. Now, without the case, it's only, I think, 30 or 60 feet. And then with okay. the case, it can go all the way to 130. Yes. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool. Um, Jen. Ooh, Jen, so sorry. I thought I hit it. Maybe I'm not hitting it. Okay, there it goes. She learned in the PNW, and my first official dive was in 34 degrees Ooh. Fahrenheit. Wow. Yikes, that's freezing. That's cold. That's, that's so definitely cold. cold water. Oh, my God. And Rick is saying his favorite dive was off Grand Island in the Philippines. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds, that sounds nice. amazing. Now, Rick used to be in the Navy. He was on uh, multiple ships, so we had a we had a great lunch with him and Barbara uh, just a couple of days ago in Epcot. We all met up for the first time. I love meeting up with people. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, it's kind of fun. He wants to go on the Celebrity Constellation because he served on the USS Constellation. And he oh, just how cool would that be? Yeah. Go on the same ship, right? Okay. Yeah. So let's let's uh, let's talk because I know this will be a little bit of a shorter talk. We've been talking a lot about scuba, but I'm sure a lot of our audience. Is if they haven't snorkeled, they're going to use cruising out there for, oh, my God, they offer snorkeling. Let's go try it. Let's go do it. And you have no idea what you're getting yourself into. Um, so let, let's just talk about, uh, you know, a, a few of the same things. Because I know you snorkel as well. Yep. Um, is there such a thing? And I don't know. Maybe there is. But is there such a thing as like like snorkel training, kind of like going to a scuba center? Can you go learn how to snorkel? I'm sure someone would happily take your money. <laughs> it's, okay. It's it's really not complicated. Um, okay. So you have your there are two types of masks and Ooh, show and tell. I have, yeah, I've got mine here. So this is also my dive mask, and nice. it has a detachable snorkel. Ooh. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing about this snorkel is this uh, whoop, vent here. Uh, so that allows the water to be discharged out the bottom instead of having to blow it and clear the whole the whole line. Oh, um, so that cool. makes it easier to if you dive under and you're holding it in your mouth to be able to come up and quickly clear without having to blow all the water out. Um, okay. So there, it's it's not very hard. Just make sure that you remember that when you're when you're snorkeling, that the uh, top part here has to be above the water, okay? Because <laughs> if water gets in it, you're gonna breathe in water. You don't want to breathe in water. 
Uh, <laughs> you want to make sure that your uh, mask has a good fit if you buy one. Um, I do not recommend the cheap ones at Walmart, especially if you think mm -hmm. you might snorkel regularly. You want to look for okay. one, and for someone like you that has the hair, this nice ribbed whoops, skirt here, uh, okay. that helps. Yep. And when you test them in the store, you move all your hair out of the way, you push it tight against your face, and if you can hold your breath and it stays on your face without having to put the strap on, it'll stay. So here, I'll show you. So you just push it. Oh, wow. It stays. Yeah, so that's how you can check to make sure you have a good seal. Oh, that is really cool. So, so you, just, you just hold your breath and let it stay there. Yep. That is cool. Yep. That is very cool. Thank you for showing us that. I got another question, but I see that Kathy snorkeled in Cancun. It was great. Awesome beauty. Thank you for sharing. That is awesome. That is awesome. So now do you have an opinion so that that's a traditional mask, what you've got right there, mm -hmm. a nice high quality traditional mask. And then now I've seen a lot more people with the big full face mask on now too. Um, do you have an opinion on one versus the other? Okay. I will personally always use my standard mask and, and snorkel. My husband does like the full face. Um, mm -hmm. My only caution of warning with the full face is to make sure that it is it clears well um, and that you can breathe easily out of it and to take regular breaks where you take the mask completely off and you get fresh oxygen because there have been people that have been passing out and then drowning because they're not getting enough fresh oxygen because of the way that the full face mask is set up. So you want one with a shorter um, stem on it for the um, for the top. You want one that has a shorter okay. one. If it has a real long one, don't go there. Don't do it. Uh, and just really? make sure you regularly every you know, 10, 15 minutes, take the whole thing off, get a few good fresh breaths in you, and then go back. Where with the standard system, you're pretty good. You're pretty safe. Yeah, so it was like carbon dioxide building mm -hmm. up inside yeah. the mask. Is that what's happening? Yep. Oh, never even thought about that. That's a, that's yep. really interesting. Um, and and I'm going to. You already gave us the tip to uh, get a good fit with the mask. And I'm I'm assuming that if you really want to get into this, you probably do want to buy your own mask because it's probably difficult to get a good fit with anything you're going to get from an excursion, right? Right. And if um, if if you're going to get into it at a minimum buy a good mask because if you're trying to see stuff underwater and you don't have a good mask you can't see anything it kind of defeats the purpose and the other yeah. thing that i absolutely uh, recommend is defog this one is a reef safe defog some areas require you to use it um, but if you're in an area that doesn't require it um, baby shampoo works just fine just a little dab rub it inside all over rinse it just a light rinse and then you you can see clearly and you know okay. bring some even if you decide to use rental gear just in case they don't have it that way you can see because there's nothing i feel more sad about when i see a whole family all excited about snorkeling and then they all come up and their their goggles are all fogged and they can't see and they're like i can't see anything and i'm like it's because you need deep fog come here i'll share mine <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so nice that you share i love that I love well, that. Because I love it so much and I want other people to enjoy it and love it too. And I, I always feel sad when people rent things and then they don't know and, and the experience uh -oh. is less than optimal. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, that, that kind of, so you already gave us our first tip, you know, the defogger or the baby shampoo, but what advice and tips do you have for somebody like, you know, like, oh my God, they have snorkeling on this thing. Let's go do it. I'm so excited. I mean, to get them ready. What, what advice and tip might you have before somebody goes out and does it for the first time? Definitely try it out in a pool. Um, most, yeah. most people have access to a pool locally. You can go to a YMCA if you don't have like a friend or even at a minimum, use a bathtub. I mean, just yeah. to kind of feel it, get the experience of having it like on your face. Um, that's a minimum, like absolute minimum. And then, you know, when you go somewhere and you're going like on an excursion, ask questions and then listen and follow the instructions given to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know for me, when we did it, uh, when Rebecca and I did it one time, she loved to snorkel. She's really good. She loved to snorkel. 
for me, my brain just could not get the message that you can breathe underwater with this thing. And it just wasn't right. Like I was almost like hyperventilating because I couldn't figure out how to breathe properly. So it is a thing. It's weird. Yes, it's kind of it like is. Weird. No, you're, you're not alone. It, it affects a lot of people. It is a training thing. You have to kind of learn how to just breathe through your mouth. So you can practice that at home anytime. So you can just cover your nose and breathe throughout your mouth and, and kind of practice not breathing in through your nose. And that'll help too. <laughs> That's hard. So at home training. Yeah, I mean, I literally went under and I did it for like 10 minutes. I'm like, no, nope, that's good. I'll just get a pool noodle. And I just floated the rest of the time because Rebecca felt bad. I'm like, no, no, you go do your thing. I'm going to get a pool noodle. I'm just going to float around. And that's what I did. <laughs> and I was fine. I was totally fine. Um, now, just like with the diving, do you have like on a cruise, do you have any particular destination that you might recommend or ports of call that people should look for for snorkeling? Okay, so I'm going to say, and, and people don't hate me, spend the extra money and go on a Disney cruise, even if it's just for a three-nighter and get to Castaway and enjoy their their thing that they have for the snorkeling. I love snorkeling at Castaway. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it is so awesome. stinking cute. They have all these sunken um treasures we'll call it uh there's actually a treasure chest down there there's a mickey and and some other fun things and that is my joy every time i get to go on a disney cruise is to do the snorkeling <laughs> that is awesome. my favorite is seeing donald in a tuxedo on formal night that is oh my yeah yeah he... so dapper <laughs> he's very dapper i mean seeing all the characters in their formal choir it's just so much fun on that um, for us, I, I, I would also recommend Tortola. Um, Rebecca and I did a, uh, again, she did the snorkeling. I didn't on that one. And she just said, wow, that was some really good snorkeling in Tortola, which is the British Virgin Islands. So, awesome. and if anybody out there, um, oh, uh, Sack Adventures says uh, snorkeling at Buck Island National Park off St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Ooh. Island. Very nice. Yeah, Tortola, and I can tell you the um, the name of the catamaran was the Daydream. So if anybody's going to Tortola, look at the Daydream catamaran. That was fabulous. Thank you, Zach, for that. Um, now, what about going to a destination? Like, if you could fly anywhere, going anywhere, where are where have you been, or maybe where would you want to go for snorkeling? Um, for snorkeling, I don't know about mm. for snorkeling. Now for diving. Uh, the Red Sea is on my bucket list. <laughs> ah, hopefully you'll Egypt get to go to there. The Red sea. Yeah, that's, that's on my bucket list. Oh, man. But I hopefully. don't know about snorkeling. I don't, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, did a little bit of diver, it over right? um, in the Exumas, and uh, we did some uh, snorkeling cave diving, and that was kind of cool. So cool. I'd do that again. That's cool. So what what's on the bucket list for scuba? for you now like like you haven't been there yet either cruise or destination where, where do you want to go dive everywhere <laughs> everywhere anywhere and everywhere that i haven't been i'll go and i haven't been to a lot of places so i'm i think i've <laughs> logged around 75 ish dives right now um okay. and so like i am i'm still just baby in the big scheme of people, I've I met people on that um, that dive boat for the week that had um, were celebrating three thousand dives. My wow. mind was blown. I was like, "Wow, three thousand dives! Think of all the stuff you've seen." <laughs> <laughs> so I want to be that person. I want to be that three thousand dive person, and I want to see as much as she's seen. She, uh, wow, like it. Wow. Yeah. So anybody wants to dive, buddy, I'm here for you. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, Betty is saying Trunk Bay in St. John. Very nice. Rick is saying uh, snorkeling off of Bonaire. Oh, yeah. Bonaire. Oh, I've heard that's good. Amazing. Yeah. And then Jen is saying get dry suit certified and, and dive the <laughs> Sifra Rift. Silf, Silfra Rift? Am I saying that right? I'm not sure. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. But that's very cool. <laughs> that's very cool. And Kathy realized she was in Cozumel, not Cancun. Very nice, very nice. Uh, that is so awesome. But so what? So you know, I've never actually been down. So what is you know for and people like me, never actually been down there. What does it sound like? What does it feel like as you get down to like a hundred or or so? I mean, it's silent. It is. It is very quiet. 
Um, you can hear yourself breathe. You hear your regulator. You hear the bubbles. Um, you can hear the boats zooming by if you're at shallow enough. It depends on where you're at, mm -hmm. but you can hear the boats going by around 60 feet. After about, once you get below 60 feet, you hear them less. Um, but yeah, you can hear, and, and the boats are noisy. Like, you're all like peace and serene, and all of a sudden you hear this boat ripping by, and you're like, you're messing up my my zen right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so you, awesome. you, hear, you hear the 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 air moving through your regulator, and it's just it's very very serene, wow. very peaceful, very quiet. Sounds incredibly cool. And Jen is saying that the Silfra Rift is the clear water between the tectonic plates. Ooh. Ooh. That sounds that amazing. Sounds really cool. I, might, I might actually have to go get dry suit certified and check that out. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. That does sound. Is that is that a lot of work to get dry suit certified? By the way, it's like no, somebody it's like not, you who's already an amateur diver. Yeah, okay. it's it's not a lot of work. It's just an extra learning experience and and doing it and feeling comfortable enough with it to then go out and actually dive out in the wild with it. So. A lot of training That's happens awesome. in the pool and then in a in a contained area like a lake where the water is mm -hmm. still and and you have like some control <laughs> and the, so whoever gotcha. your dive instructor can grab you if they need to and yank you up. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't go drifting off yeah like yeah we, we try not gotcha. to lose people <laughs> gotcha and jen said that she will be your dive buddy so it sounds like you two are going to have to plan a trip Ooh, together all point. right <laughs> I'm always looking for new dive buddies. That's awesome. Because I my husband love that. does not dive, so I'm always looking for dive buddies. Well, and we met Jen on a, we, we met uh, Jen actually on a Panama Canal cruise on Princess uh, years ago. So it was so nice to reconnect. We kind of lost touch for a while. Now we've reconnected. Jen is awesome people just like you. So, yeah, Aww. I think you guys would be good dive buddies. <laughs> Look me up, Jen. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Uh, go go ping her. Uh, Mindy's Life and Adventures on YouTube and other social channels as well. And of course, if you come join our private Facebook group at Where's Walter Travel, Mindy is a part of that. And if you come on our group cruise on the Sun Princess, we've still got some. In fact, they've started opening up additional categories. We just noticed yesterday that the solo cabins are now available. There's four. There's four solo interior cabins. However, they're only about $30 cheaper than getting a regular interior for a solo person. So, Ooh. but like those cabins have not been open forever. And then we noticed that another whole group of uh, cove balconies just became available. So there is still room on the Sun Princess. We're sailing October 19th through the 26th of this year. Sun Princess will be fully operational by then. Everything will be ready. <laughs> um, you think you might do, let's see, so what are we doing? We're doing Princess Key, San Juan, and St. Thomas. You think you might do anything at one of those? Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm always looking for an excuse to go diving. There you go. <laughs> you there you go. And somebody, <laughs> somebody mentioned St. Thomas earlier. So, hey, maybe St. Thomas might be the spot for you to look for something. Yep. That'll be awesome. That would be amazing. Well, we have been going for an hour and I like to try to keep the extra respect everybody's time. So uh, we're going to wrap this up. I want to say huge thank you to Mindy for coming and joining us. This was like a last minute thing. I really appreciate you picking up the, the ball and running with it tonight. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was so happy to be on here and be with you. I always love chatting with you, Walter, and I, I just adore you and I appreciate everything that you do for us in the community. Well, thank you very much. And and with that, uh, I'll remind everybody, I am Walter Wood, Where's Walter Travel. If we can help you in any way with any of your travels, our services are 100% free. We have helped Mindy and the other Rebecca go out on cruises, too. <laughs> and uh, just <laughs> just reach out, where's waltertravel.com, or go down to the links. I've also got a link to Mindy's channel down there, too. So make sure you go subscribe to her, follow her. Everybody, thank you so very much to everybody uh, for joining in. Arlana, hello. I'm sorry you came in at the end. Uh, we'll be back. We're going to be back on Sunday morning at 1030 a.m. Eastern time on TikTok and YouTube with Cruise Chat Live. And then we'll be right back here next Thursday night. Uh, for Cruise Chat Live. Maybe we'll have another guest next week. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And Mindy, again, thank you.
for being there. Welcome. And Thank everybody. You for having me. Have an amazing evening, everybody. Good night.